Hello, I'm Colin Green, and you are listening to Spike Pit. Once upon a time, long, long ago, in a realm called the Midwestern United States, specifically the states of Minnesota and Wisconsin, a group of friends gathered together to forever alter the history of gaming. It wasn't their intent to do so. They were tired of merely reading tales about worlds of magic, monsters and adventure. That they went on to invent Dungeons and Dragons, and thereby ignite a revolution in gaming that continues to this day, speaks to two things. First, it speaks to their ingenuity and genius in figuring out that games were the perfect way to explore worlds that could not otherwise exist. Almost every modern game, whether played on a digital device or a tabletop, owes some debt to D&D. Second, it is a testament to the inherent appeal of the game they created. Dungeons & Dragons sparked a thriving global phenomenon. It is the first role-playing game, and it remains one of the best of its breed. To play D&D and to play it well, you don't need to read all the rules, memorise every detail of the game, or master the fine art of rolling funny looking dice. None of those things have any bearing on what's best about the game. What you need are two things. The first, being friends with whom you can share the game. Playing games with your friends is a lot of fun, but D&D does something more than entertain. Playing D&D is an exercise in collaborative creation. You and your friends create epic stories filled with tension and memorable drama. You create silly in-jokes that make you laugh years later. The dice will be cruel to you, but you will soldier on. Your collective creativity will build stories that you will tell again and again, ranging from the utterly absurd to the stuff of legend. If you don't have friends interested in playing, don't worry. There's a special alchemy that takes place around a D&D table that nothing else can match. Play the game with someone enough and the two of you are likely to end up friends. It's a cool side effect of the game. Your next gaming group is as close as the nearest game store, online forum or gaming convention. The second thing you need is a lively imagination, or, more importantly, the willingness to use whatever imagination you have. You don't need to be a master storyteller or a brilliant artist. You just need to aspire to create to have the courage of someone who is willing to build something and share it with others. Luckily, just as D&D can strengthen your friendships, it can help build in you the confidence to create and share. D&D is a game that teaches you to look out for the clever solution. Share the sudden idea that can overcome a problem and push yourself to imagine what could be rather than simply accept what is. The first characters and adventures you create will probably be a collection of cliches. That's true of everyone, from the greatest dungeon masters in history on down. Accept this reality and move on to create the second character or adventure, which will be better, then the third, which will be better still. Repeat that over the course of time, and soon you'll be able to create anything, from a character's background story to an epic world of fantasy adventure. Once you have that skill, it's yours forever. Countless writers, artists and other creators can trace their beginnings to a few pages of D&D notes, a handful of dice and a kitchen table. Above all else, D&D is yours. The friendships you make around the table will be unique to you. The adventures you embark on, the characters you create, the memories you make, these will be yours. D&D is your personal corner of the universe, a place where you have free reign to do as you wish. Go forth now, read the rules of the game and the story of its worlds, but always remember that you are the one who brings them to life. They are nothing without the spark of life that you give them. I was busy rescuing the captured maiden when the dragon showed up. Fifty feet of scaled terror 
glared down at us with smouldering red eyes. Tendrils of smoke drifted out from between fangs larger than daggers. The dragon blocked the only exit from the cave. Sometimes I forget that the D&D fantasy adventure game is a game and not a novel I'm reading or a movie I'm watching. The original D&D rules are a classic. They gave the first gaming system for fantasy role playing and, in my opinion, are still the best set of rules on the market. When I revised the rules, I tried to maintain the spirit of the earlier rules. Those rules were written for people with a background of gaming experience. This revision was designed to be easily read and used by individuals who have never before played a role-playing game. In the half a dozen years since the original rules were published, the TSR staff has answered thousands of rules questions. The answers helped find problem areas in those rules, areas which could either stand minor improvements or were difficult for novice gamers to understand. This revision was aided not only by the collected gaming experience of TSR personnel, but by the gaming experience of the thousands of players and DMs who sent us letters in the mail. The D&D game is neither losers nor winners, it is only gamers who relish exercising their imagination. The players and the DM share in creating adventures in the fantastic lands where heroes abound and magic really works. In a sense, the D&D game has no rules, only rule suggestions. No rule is inviolate, particularly if a new or altered rule will encourage creativity and imagination. The important thing is to enjoy the adventure. I unwrapped the sword which the mysterious cleric had given me. The sword was golden tinted steel. Its hilt was set with a rainbow collection of precious gems. I shouted my battle cry and charged. My charge caught the dragon by surprise. Its titanic jaws snapped shut inches from my face. I swung the golden sword with both arms. The sword blade bit into the dragon's neck and continued through to the other side. With an earth-shaking crash, the dragon dropped dead at my feet. The magic sword had saved my life and ended the reign of the dragon tyrant. The countryside was freed and I could return as a hero. And that, as they say, is a wrap. Big thanks goes out to you, the listener, for taking a bit of time out of your day to listen to Old Spike Pit. Take care, and I'll catch you later.